Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% on your brand new website. This video has been five and a half months in the making. This will be the final rebuild of FIFA 19. For those of you that did not know, I have been doing a career mode series on my second channel, Jared HD2. Go and check it out if you haven't. But I have been doing a career mode series with Aston Villa, which extended for 80 one episodes. In that time, I have taken them from a championship side all the way to champions of Europe. And today I have cut together all 81 episodes to make it into a rebuild. This video has taken so, so long to edit. I've had to go through 81 episodes with a fine tooth nail, a fine comb. Did I say tooth nail? What the hell is that? But I've had to go through and look through a lot of content to get all of the important info for this video. I apologize in advance if I have missed a clip or two. As I said, there was a lot to go through and the quality is a little bit low because I've had to download half the series off of YouTube because I didn't have this good idea until about two weeks ago. But anyway, sit back and enjoy one of my favorite ever videos I've had the opportunity to make. I will be doing a lot of content like this on my second channel in FIFA 20, so go and check it out. But as I said, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is what our starting lineup looks like. And it's definitely a side I feel like we can get promoted with. Promotion has to be the number one goal for this first season. A lot of low knee players, but of course we've got Jack Relish in there. This bloke, Kalinic, I hadn't heard of him, but he's a pretty high rated goalkeeper to have in the championship. It's a very balanced championship side. But my main areas that I want to focus on improving this season, I want to go for a new left mid slash left winger. I want to go potentially for a new left back because Tyrone Mings is only here on loan. And then potentially even go, if we have a decent amount of money left over, for a new center midfielder. And El Mohamedi is our right back right now, the Egyptian, but I'm going to go in and recall, I believe it's Gilbert, the right back, the Frenchman, because he is quality in this game. He's out on loan at Khan in the French League, but we're going to recall him for 174,000 pounds because we want to have a 76 rated right back in this side when we're pushing for promotion. And there it is, lads. We make our first signing in charge of Aston Villa. It is Tatsuya Ito, the Japanese midfielder, joins us. 3.2 million pounds. He should be an absolute weapon for us in the first few seasons. And there it is, lads. Tyrell Malassia is going to be our second signing as Villa manager. The Dutch left back arrives for 2.1 million pounds from Feyenoord. So there it is, our first player departure as Villa manager. Berker Bjarnsson is off to Red Bull Salzburg for 850,000 pounds. Really trying to raise the funds to get a new center midfielder in, but Adama is off to Gremio for 2.8 million pounds. There it is, Davies with an Aston Villa kit in hand. Might change up his squad numbers and all the squad numbers, to be honest, but I am stoked with that pickup. Mark Bunn, gone on transfer deadline day, off to Saudi Arabia. Should be a nice little payday for him over there. So that's the opening transfer window in charge of Aston Villa, done and dusted. Ito, Malassia, and Davies into the club. Bjarnson, Adama, Hurahan, and Bunn out of it. And there it is, Jonathan Kogia off to the Bundesliga, off to Augsburg for 3.5 million pounds. Also, Mika Richards will be departing us next season on a free transfer, which I'm not too bothered about. 30 years old, he's not worth much money at all, so we'll have him for the rest of the season. And then he'll be off to Botafogo in the Brazilian League. And two more player departures as we lose both Jed Steer and Ahmed El Mohamedi, so getting a little bit more money in there. And the two Belgian sides fought it out for the signature of Henry Lansbury. And thankfully for us, he's gone to Genk for 50,000 pounds more. So best of luck, Henry. Henry? Henry. And there it is, Neil Taylor, just like that. Off to Augsburg for 1.4 million pounds. And in case anybody cares, Jamie Vardy also went to the Bundesliga. All right, there it is. Top left-hand corner. It's probably a deal I'm going to come to regret. But we have sold Andre Green. I know I'm not happy about it, but we need to sell him. He was the only player that I could really see us selling. There it is, lads. We don't care. Alan Hutton's going to Al Nassar next season on a free. But Callum 
Hudson Adoy is joining us at Aston Villa today. Welcome, mate. One of the hottest prospects in not only English, European, but world football. Callum Hudson Adoy signing for Aston Villa on deadline day for just 6.4 million pounds. So there we are. That is the January transfer window completed. A little bit batshit crazy. All those players just for one pickup. But Callum Hudson Adoy is going to be worth it. He'll jump into the left wing spot, and that's going to spell the end of the immediate future of Ito. We'll probably be on our bench, but I haven't enjoyed using him. Enjoy this, lads. This is going to be beautiful to watch. Hopefully, not the only pieces of silverware we win in our time at Aston Villa. It is going to be the captain, Jack Grealish. Last season, heartbreak at Wembley as Fulham got promoted in the playoff final. But this year, we are automatically promoted and we are champions of the championship. Premier League bound ourselves and West Brom automatically going up to the Premier League in the second season. Over the moon about the season we have had. I mean, imagine if we weren't so prone to having draws. We would have killed the league. We could have easily got 100 points this season, but we're top on 89 points. Stoke, Leeds, Derby, and Nottingham Forest fighting it out for the final spots. Who got relegated? Surprised to see teams like Swansea in the mid-table, but it is Bristol City, Millwall, and Rotherham all relegated. Taking a look at some of the other competitions, though, Arsenal did win the FA Cup 4-0 over Newcastle. Tottenham won the Carabao Cup 3-1 over Newcastle. Not a good year for the Magpies. Derby County have gone and won the promotion playoff final. So they will be joining us and West Brom in the Premier League next season. Leeds have choked hard. When we first Leeds, they were top of the table and they looked like they were certain to go to the Premier League. Wow, Leeds have choked it big time. And then on some European football, Barcelona won the Champions League and Arsenal win a North London Derby Europa League final. But fellas, that is where season one of the Aston Villa career mode series will come to a conclusion. Premier League bound next season. And it's safe to say we are gonna be in a quite hefty relegation battle. Let's crack on. And there it is, fellas. Our first signing of the Premier League era should have the Premier League badge on there, but we have brought in Diego Llorente from Real Sociedad. The 79-rated centre-back joins us for £16.5 million. Pounds. Get in there, fellas. Almost the next day, Maximilian Philip accepted the contract offer. He is very, very keen to come to Villa Park. And just like that, we bring in a quality striker who I expect to help keep us up this season. It is Maximilian Philip. Welcome to Aston Villa. Just my bloody luck. I should have just declined this one and gone for the other one. But Ross McCormack, he's off for a little holiday in Italy. Hopefully he doesn't get stuck in his bloody mansion or his villa like he did when he played for Fulham. But Ross McCormack is off to Parma for 1.1 million pounds. So there it is, a player departure that we wanted to go through just for a financial point of view. It is Scott Hogan, the Irishman, headed to Parma, linking up with Ross McCormack, who we sold to Parma last episode. But this time we sell him for 3.85 million pounds. And Ross Townsend coming across from Crystal Palace. A massive, massive pickup for us. But fellas, that is going to conclude the opening transfer window for life in Premier League for season number two. Llorente, Philip, and Townsend in. McCormack and Hogan out of the club. This is what the starting lineup looks like. Definitely so much room for improvement, but I'm over the moon with the business without being able to do so far. So a few things happening here. Kalinic has made the move to West Ham United. It's a shame, but I'm doing it for the best. It's a shame the bloody taxes exist. That's so annoying. Just give me all 11.5 million. Uh, and Elphick is going to be leaving as well. I don't really care. He's not really worth too much. He'll be going to Sampdoria on a free next season. And there it is. Oyan Nyland has departed the club for 3.8 million pounds to Southampton. So Gary Gardner has left the club. He is off to Internacional for 1.95 million. It's disappointing that things didn't work out between us and Malassia. He was very hit and miss for us. And unfortunately, I think his five foot seven stature really cost him in the long run. 
<sighs> We've sold Malassia to Braga for 7.5 million pounds. And we have also sold Aaron Shibola to San Lorenzo for 1.1 million pounds. Get in there, fellas. There it is. We have signed ourselves a new number one, one of my favorite players. I am so excited for this transfer. It is an upgrade and it is Matty Ryan coming across from Brighton for 15.7 million pounds. And there it is, fellas. That's the end of the transfer window. It's been a window which has shaken up the squad quite a lot. Matt Ryan into it. Elphick, Kalinic, Nyland, Garner, and Malassia out. Not all of you guys are going to agree with the business I have done, but I think it's going to be the best for us. Our squad definitely mixed and matched for the end of the season. Thankfully, we got off to such a strong start that it's really helped us, but Philip should be back within the next few games, which will help a lot. Our defense is where we might struggle, especially center back and left back, but I think we're safe from relegation for this season, hopefully, unless we have a shocker of an end to the season, but yeah, we're doing well. After 38 games in season two, we have finished in second, no, <laughs> second position, I wish. Sixth position there, 62 points. United ended up getting a point, so we couldn't have got fifth. But Wolves, they did lose. So we, I think, are going to be playing Europa League football in season three, which is quite damn cool. Chelsea win the Premier League, a pretty low scoring season. But our record ends up being 17 wins, 11, 11 draws and 10 losses. Not bad considering we thought we'd be in the relegation battle. Speaking of the relegation battle though, it is Leicester, Derby and West Brom getting relegated. So we were the only promoted side to stay up. But taking a look around here at the other tournaments, Everton did win the FA Cup 3-0 over Fulham. Crystal Palace won the Carabao Cup 1-0 over Wolves. That actually, both of those results might be bad for our UEFA Europa League hopes. Barcelona took down Manchester United to win the Champions League and shall they won the Europa League. So fellas, that is the conclusion of our second season of the Aston Villa career mode series. So there it is, the cutscene of Jamal Lascelles. His first pitches in Villa sort of colours, holding up the jersey at least. It's so annoying in FIFA when, even though you're a Premier League club, they still don't update that single cutscene, although the rest of them are all Premier League badges. But, oh well, Jamal Lascelles, 81 rated centre back, joining us, him and Llorente are sure to prove to become a rock for us. At least, I hope so. There it is, lads. We have signed Emerson from Chelsea. A pretty realistic signing, if you ask me. He hasn't been getting much game time at all for, for Chelsea, so he's going to take a step back, and he is undoubtedly going to be getting a lot of game time here at Villa Park. And there it is. On transfer deadline day, we have sold Richie Delat to Norwich City for 1.15 million pounds. This has been our transfer window. Not as active as I would have hoped, but the board really didn't help us out in terms of finances. Jamal Lascelles and Emerson into the club. Richie Delat out of it. McCurdy, we sold him a few months ago. He officially leaves and we get the money now. So he is out of here. A player departure as James Chester departs the club. The Welshman was very good for us across the first two seasons, but now it is time for him to leave. 3.5 million pounds to Levante. Get in there, fellas! Julian Draxler accepts it. We have made a massive pre-contract signing for season number four. He's gonna revolutionize our midfield. Welcome in season number four to Aston Villa, Julian Draxler. Oh my. So here is the little cutscene of May. It's still annoying that we've got the championship badge on the side there, but it is what it is. He's valued at 4.2 million pounds. So we've got him for under half his valuation, which is just absolutely batshit crazy. So excited to grow this guy throughout the series. So there it is, lads. A pretty active transfer window. Julian Draxler and Lars Lucas Meyer into the club. We get one German this season and then Draxler, another German, next season. So damn excited to have him in our midfield. Chester out. So ultimately, we ended the third season in the Premier League in ninth position, which is quite disappointing given the strong start of the season we had. We were in and around the top four for the majority of the season, but that poor run of form across the last two episodes really cost us 
Europa League and even Champions League football because we only finished six points away from fifth place Manchester United. The top nine really was so, so close. Tottenham won the Premier League 11 points ahead of Arsenal. We cost Liverpool second position by beating them on the final day of the season. And the relegated sides are going to be West Ham, Brighton and Watford. Man United did go on to win the FA Cup 2-0 over Everton. Chelsea, they won the Carabao Cup 5-4 on penalties over Liverpool. Real Madrid took down Lazio. What the hell? Lazio? Fair play Lazio. They've made the Champions League final, but it is Real Madrid winning. And AC Milan took down Hoffenheim to win the Europa League final. The moment of truth is upon us though. A 58 manager rating. Are we going to get sacked? No, we're not. We're going to be staying on for season four, which is fantastic to see. And the big first piece of business to begin this season is going to be the arrival of Julian Draxler, who we did secure on a pre-contract agreement last season. He's 86 rated. He's going to join our center midfield role. So there it is. We have sold Matt Ryan to Newcastle United. 24. 4.8 million pounds, I believe it was. So that's a decent bit of transfer business. But Matt Ryan's era at Aston Villa, it's over. There he is, our new number one, wearing Villa colors for the first time here. So excited to see how he can perform for us this season. An upgrade on Matt Ryan in both overall at height and I'm sure performance. So Leiden has been sold just like that. He ends up going to Sivaspor. Not sure why you turn down living in Orlando to live in Turkey, I believe, but fair enough, Jordan Leiden off to Sivaspor. So I have been looking at a couple of free agents here. I always like to go in at the start of the season and see if there's any standout players that could pick up for a free. So we've gone in for two and the first of them has accepted. Juan Soro Alvarez, a Spanish center midfielder, age 19, 68 rated. Looks like a great pickup for the future. So welcome, Juan Soro Alvarez. But before we find out about Erdegaard, we are going to hear from the other young free agent signing we approached, Kevin Reader, a Dutch left winger. Looks like a quality player. Definitely going to be a good backup to a Hudson Adoy, 65 rated, 19 years of age. We are going to accept that. So there it is. There is the cutscene of Martin Erdegaard. I'm going to change his number, probably give him 11 or something like that. But so, so excited to have this youngster into the squad, to hopefully fulfill his potential. So straight out of that game against Everton, we have a player departure. It is Blackett Taylor officially making his move away from Villa Park off to Turkey for £830,000. Guys, you are not going to be able to believe it. Doyle Hayes has left the club. He's left. He's gone. Get out of here. Good luck in Portsmouth, mate. Oh, he's finally gone. Praise be to the FIFA gods. So there it is, lads. That is the opening window for season number four, done and dusted. Four players in, Ariola, Soro Alvarez, Arida, and Martin Erdegaard into the club. Ryan, Leiden, Blackett Taylor, and Doyle Hayes out of the club. So massive news after that Wolves game. And yes, it is true. Diego Llorente, thank you for your service, mate. But we have sold the Spaniard to Atletico Madrid. How much did it end up being? Was it 37.2 million? I think so. So now the goal is to bring in a crazy upgrade. Yes, lads, there it is. Eder Militao is going to be an Aston Villa player. 84 rated center back. This guy is an absolute gun in game and in potential. He's going to be a star for the future and a star for us for the long term of this save. Welcome to Aston Villa, Eder Militao. So there it is, Lenny Pintor. His first look in Aston Villa colors. Transfer deadline day pickup. The Frenchman, 7.2 million. Oh my God, what? How did we get him for so cheap? 7.2 million pounds we got him for, but he's valued at 11.5. I'm happy with that. But fellas, that is going to be the end of the transfer window. As you can see here, it's been a pretty busy January transfer window. Militao and Pintor into the club. Llorente out of it, the starting 11 and the squad as a whole looking stronger than ever. Hopefully this is the season that we can number one qualify for Champions League football. 
but potentially, with it all in our hands, win the Premier League title with Aston Villa. Shit, we bottled Champions League football. Are you fucking kidding me? How? How have we bottled it? We were looking at winning the title at the start of the episode. Now we've bottled Champions League football. Get absolute, oh my God. Fair play to Liverpool, FA Cup winners. We had a good run, but it's a day to forget. And of course, that 2 0 loss to Liverpool in the FA Cup means they are FA Cup champions. Watford did take down Fulham to win the Carabao Cup this season. Atletico Madrid take down Juventus to win the Champions League. I'm still gutted that we're not going to be in the Champions League next season. But a competition that I'm very excited to see how we go in next season is the Europa League. AC Milan won an All-Italian Europa League final. So that brings to a close the fourth season in charge of Aston Villa. In the grand scheme of things, this was a pretty good season. I mean, we secured European football for next season. We made the FA Cup final, but the disappointing aspect of it is how well we started, considering we were flying in the FA Cup and it looked like we were going to win the Premier League title. The fact that we finished fifth and runners-up really bums me out, but... We move on now to season number five, a big turning point in the career mode series. How good is that? He even gets his own little cutscene, his own welcome sign. Herving Lozano, now at Villa Park, he is going to become a club legend for us, surely. And there it is, there's the cutscene. Look at that, we've got Hudson Adoy, we've got Lozano, Juan Vesaka, Draxler, and Ariola. We have done some good business in our five seasons. And there it is. He's gone as quick as he came. One season at Aston Villa for Martin Erdegaard. Really did not enjoy using him. Had really high, high hopes that he could be a superstar for the series, but we've cut ties with him. And I think having Lozano in is so much better. But Erdegaard, I wish you the best of luck. As long as it's not against us, 39.1 million pounds he's off to for Arsenal. So there it is, Frederick Gilbert. He has been a very loyal man for us in this save. He has been with us from the championship all the way to where we are now. But it is time to move on. It's only business. 28.7 million pounds is the transfer sum. Best of luck to him, definitely, at Valencia. I mean, I said it just in kindness to Erdegaard, but we mean it for Gilbert. He's one of us. And in the wait for Julian Brandt to come, we have sold Keenan Davis, who has gone to Southampton. The Englishman signs for 8.2 million pounds. And there it is. There is the cutscene. Yeah, that looks good. We've got a massive player now. Hopefully he performs for us on the pitch because our midfield has definitely let us down in the past season, I would say. Julian Brandt, welcome to Aston Villa, mate. And Rashan Hepburn Murphy's deal to Estudiantes has gone through. He is headed there for 3.95 million pounds. And there it is, lads. It hurts, but I feel like it was necessary progression for the series. As we say goodbye to former captain, Club legend, Jack Grealish. He's making the move to Chelsea. I'm still conflicted about it, and I hope you guys aren't too pissed off about it, but I'm sure you can see that. Bringing in Brandt, getting that money was necessary for the side. We wish him the best of luck at Chelsea. So I have been putting in offers for a couple of Youth Academy regens uh, through the free agent system. And George Bray, an English right back, 66 rated at age 19, is going to accept our offer here. So welcome to Villa Park, George Bray. And there it is, our second free agent signing that we have brought in is Armand Bizet, the French midfielder, 65 rated, age 20. Excited to see how he grows throughout the course of the series. So to say we've had a pretty batshit crazy insane window is an understatement. Lozano, Juan Bissaka, and Julian Brandt, the big names to come in. We've got Bray and Bizet coming in as well. And then a lot of players out. Erdegaard, Gilbert, O'Hare, Davis, Hepburn, Murphy, among others, Grealish as well. So yeah, it's been a pretty significant window here. Our side, it's looking mint. It is looking nice. It's not bad. Let's go, lads. We have signed Gabriel Jesus, Gabby Jesus, on a pre-contract agreement for next season. I'm so excited to have this guy in next year. He's going to take us to a whole nother level. It's our second pre-contract signing of the entire series, so 
we are going to go ahead with it. Jesus coming to Aston Villa next season. And there it is. Maximilian Philip is no longer an Aston Villa player. We salute you for your service, Maxi, but the Maxi Magic is headed to Fiorentina. We wish him the best of luck, of course, unless it's against us in the Europa League or Champions League, but we have sold him for 30 million pounds. There it is, lads. Andre Silva accepts our contract offer. So we have a new star man. We have a new star striker. Andre Silva, welcome to Aston Villa. Let's get a look at you in that kit. There it is. We've already given him the number nine. Thank you very much. This guy should be a gun. Imagine next season, Silva and Jesus up front together. Oh my God. Oh my God. Miracles do happen. Mitchell Clark has left the club. It's a miracle. It's a career mode miracle. He's off to see the day up for 860,000. With a couple days remaining in the January transfer window, Emerson has gone back to his home nation of Italy, off to Fiorentina for 14.7 million pounds. I had mixed reviews with Emerson, but ultimately he's made us better in the long run. So again, a look at the cut scene. Look at how many good players we have this season. We have done bits this season, honestly. Four of those five players have come in this window, this season. So, wow, we have built a very good side here. Surely we would have to be one of the favorites in the Europa League now. So a very busy January transfer window here. Silva and Mendy in now. Gabriel Jesus coming in next year. Are you kidding me? We're gonna have a stacked squad. We've sold Philip, we've sold Clark, we've sold Emerson. We have done bits, lads. The steps we have taken this season is absolutely insane. We have brought such a crazy amount of talent. When I brought that man in there, Julian Brandt, when I signed him, we took a huge risk. We sold a club hero in Jack Grealish, but it's paid off. An influential figure, Tom Davies. He's been here since season one, and he lifts the Premier League trophy for us. Ladies and gentlemen, Aston Villa are your Barclays. Well, not even Barclays anymore. Your Premier League champions here are the final standings for the premier league season we finished five points clear on 75 points arsenal in second city in third that win helped chelsea so you're welcome chelsea that helped them overtake liverpool and get into the top four for next season liverpool in sixth who got relegated three relegated sides a Cardiff city brighton and wolves no surprise that wolves got relegated because when we versed them we beat them six nil and four one i think so Definitely no surprise to see those three sides relegated, but oh my god, we're gonna have so much money next season. Taking a look around the other tournaments, and it is Everton who went on to win at the FA Cup, taking down Tottenham on penalties. Spurs did get their piece of silverware for the season, however, as they take down Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup. Manchester City took down Real Madrid to be Champions League winners. Very interested to see how we go next season in the Champions League for the first time. And Arsenal went on to beat Valencia on penalties in the Europa League final. So they may have finished second in the Premier League, but they win the Europa League. Of course, we made the semi-finals. 5-3 loss on aggregate, but Valencia can't go and win it for us. What a season it was. Premier League champions with Aston Villa. I can't believe we got him for 50 million pounds. That is a great price. Welcome to Aston Villa, Presnel Kempembe. That is sick. And there it is. Jamal Lascelles is no longer an Aston Villa man. We thank him for his service. He was good for us for the most part, but age is ultimately the biggest factor. You have to be cutthroat. 27.7 million pounds is a good transfer fee for him though. So there it is, Pickford, 88 rated. He's an upgrade on Ariola, that is for sure. He younger and two overall higher. So he's going to be a great pickup for us. English as well, which helps us fill the English quota. Welcome to Aston Villa, Jordan Pickford. And there it is. Kevin Reader has departed the club. He was slowly growing, but I thought it was time just to get rid of him. He was never going to get a start or any game time on our side, even in cup competitions. So we've sold him to Brentford for 2.4 million pounds. Today, we lift the Community Shield title. Nobody seems too thrilled about it, but 
that's silverware nonetheless. So there it is. Juan Soro Alvarez has been sold to Bologna. 7.4 million pounds for the Spaniard. That's going to allow us now to go in and go for a centre midfielder. I've been wanting to go in for for quite a while. And there it is, straight after the Man United game, Andros Townsend departs the club. He is headed to Fenerbahce. We've got to say a big thank you to Andros Townsend. He was a hero for us. He was one of our best players in those opening few seasons. But it's time for him to go. 7.7 .7 million pounds to Fenerbahce. Here we go, the UEFA Champions League group stage draw. Who do we have in our opening Champions League group? Who's it going to be? Are we going to get some of the big dogs? We aren't in one of the first four groups. We have Roma, PSV, and Dinamo Kiev. That is an achievable group. That's a group we can get out of. It's going to be a tough task in some aspects, but I have a lot of confidence seeing that group draw. Here is the cutscene of him juggling the football. Beautiful stuff to see. He's going to fit so perfectly into our midfield. Only 26 years of age, 90 overall. What a beast. So there it is. Julian Draxler, no longer an Aston Villa man. He was good for us. I enjoyed using him, but ultimately he wasn't that game-changing midfielder for the squad. But ultimately, we did pick him up on a free. So selling him to Wolves for what, 65.1 million pounds is absolutely brilliant business. But I'm going to hold off on making any more transfers this window. I'm going to suss out our side and really get to feel out the squad and see what needs working on come January 1st. But it has been a transfer window for the ages. Kimpembe, Pickford, De Jong, and of course, Jesus coming into the club. Lascelles, Rita, sorry, Alvarez, Townsend, and Draxler all out of the club. And now this is what our starting lineup looks like. Absolutely insane. La oh my god. Neymar. We we've signed we've okay. Neymar has accepted a pre-contract deal here at Aston Villa. I can't deny that. I cannot accept I, I have to accept this. Neymar will be an Aston Villa player next season. Oh my god. Goodness gracious me. Our squad's going to be freakish, man. Absolutely incredible business. So here's our first look at Calvert-Lewin as an Aston Villa man. It's a shame that in the game they haven't updated the graphics package and it still shows the championship, but that is a fantastic addition to our side. We might have overpaid slightly, but he's still going to be very good for us, especially when we get deep into the Champions League. Hopefully we get deep into the Champions League, but 26.3 million pounds. I'm very happy with that. And just like that, everything feels correct in the universe. So good to have him back. So there's the cutscene for Riyad Mahrez. I'm very interested to see what the response is in the comment section from you guys. I don't know if you guys are going to love it or not. So a pretty active window for us. Neymar coming in next season, which is just ridiculous. Uh, Calvert-Lewin, Twans Bay and Mahrez into the club for the second half of the season. And what a second half of the season it is sure to be. We've got Champions League football, all this crazy stuff. Let's get into it. But it is now time for our first taste of knockout football in the Champions League as Leon come to town. Come on. Here we go. Jesus through. Heavy touch. But he finds the back of the net. We have, may have dominated the opening few minutes, but we can't allow lapses of concentration because they're going... What? How? On the counter-attack here. We're going to send that one early to Pintor. What a beautiful run. Get past Valley Ho. He does. Pintor green times it. What a goal. Goes through. Davies. It falls. Pintor 3-1. There it is, fellas. We take a massive advantage into the second leg in France as we have a 3-1 win against Lyon. We have a Champions League quarterfinal to qualify for. God damn it. We currently hold a 3-1 lead against Leon here. Brands, La Croqueta. Come on, lads. We go to Pintor. Lenny, over the top. Jesus, heads it. Gets the away goal. What technique from Gabby Jesus. Brands, over the top. Jesus slips in behind. It's an unfortunate bounce, but it's another class finish. Let's go. We head to the Champions League quarterfinals in emphatic style. Heading into the game, I was quite nervous that we would bottle the two-goal advantage, but we just carried on, kept calm, and head through to the quarterfinals 5-1 on aggregate. All right, here we go, lads. The Champions League quarterfinals draw. 
Who are we facing? Aston Villa, that is our name. And we are versing PSG. W wow. Okay, that's going to be interesting. PSG, Neymar, the man that's coming to our club next season. I'm assuming Mbappe, we're going to be versing him. PSG have a very good side in career mode. This is going to be a big test. But here we go. The moment of truth. It is PSG versus Aston Villa. The Champions League quarterfinals. This is going to be interesting. Verratti on the attack here for PSG early. Going there to Wesley. Wesley through! Wow, we haven't even touched the ball. And PSG have taken the lead through Kylian Mbappe. Who goes to Silva. Beautifully timed run from Julian Brandt. Set up the sweaty goal. Oh, we fucked the sweaty goal. But we've equalized. There it is, lads. That is full time. You know, after the first four minutes, I thought we were in real strife. But we had a much improved second half there. We've got a one score scoreline. PSG with the away goal advantage. But here we go. The Champions League hangs in the balance. The simple thing is we need to score. Because if we don't score, PSG will go through an away goals rule, even if it ends nil-nil. So this is massive. The Parc de Prince is the venue. The Champions League quarterfinals against PSG. Neymar on the attack here for PSG. Come on, Verratti. Oh, De Jong clips him. No foul in that. I thought it might have been a foul. Wesley 1-0 up. PSG looking for one last opportunity here in the first half. Mbappe. Up against May. Sends that one in there. They get the head. Are you fucking kidding me? Trying to defend here. They go there. They send that one in early. Punched away from Jordan Pickford. But they win the ball back. Yusuf Paulson goes to Neymar. We're done. We are done. Come on. Going over the top. Beautiful ball. Come on. Let's get a goal back. Jesus, there's a goal back. Let's get that ball. Ah, we're done. Yep, there it is. Fair play. That was shit defending on my behalf. And that is the end of our Champions League run for this sixth, sixth, seventh season, I think. Disappointing, man. But ladies and gentlemen, for the second straight year, Aston Villa are your Premier League champions. Party time at Villa Park. Can we do the double this season? Can we win the FA Cup? Lars Lucas Mai is going to go to the right-hand side and, and misses. Fuck's sake! Shit, lads. Fuck. We lose the FA Cup final on penalties. We go back to back in the Premier League. We played fantastic. We scored 86 goals, which was insane. Just need to tighten things up a little bit more in the back next season. But we are Premier League champions for the second straight season. Here are the final standings. Chelsea are down in 11th. Everton in 13th, which is surprising. And the three relegated sides are Leeds United, Bournemouth, and Burnley. Of course. Oh, wait, no, we have the Community Shield at the start of the season, which we won 3-1 over Everton. But the FA Cup final, of course, we lost. Man City also managed to win the Carabao Cup over Man United on penalties, so they are efficient at the penalty spot. Arsenal took down Man City on penalties in the Super Cup, though, so balances out, I guess. Roma went on to win the Champions League. How did PSG go? So PSG, who eliminated us in the quarterfinals, Ended up going down to Roma in the semi-finals, who beat Atletico Madrid. So we sort of lost to the champions. So I can't claim that. And Tottenham took down Stuttgart of all sides to win the Europa League. So once again, I would like to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you are looking to create a website for your store, your business, or any creative outlet you have, Squarespace is the spot to do it. For me, the feature that really stands out with Squarespace is the interface. It is so easy to put together your own website and an aesthetically pleasing website as well. I'm also a big fan of the complete commenting features. Community is a massive part of what I do here. And the fact that you can create a fully integrated commenting system that allows you to look at comments, likes, all of that good stuff is awesome. There also are no plugins necessary when you are creating a website with Squarespace. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, make sure you go to squarespace.com slash jaredhd to get 10% off your first website or domain. So there it is, our new goalkeeper. Gonna have to change that number. 
but the 56 million pound release clause of Gianluigi Donnarumma has been activated. We now have a new star goalkeeper at Villa Park. Having him as well is really going to help for simulation. But there it is. Our one season experiment with Jordan Pickford is over as he has gone to Bournemouth for 63 million pounds. So again, a piece of business that might surprise a few of us. Ruben Neves, 64.2 million pounds. He will come in to replace Frankie de Jong. Definitely lower overall, but I feel like he's going to be such a crucial player for us in the midfield. I'm saying this like 87 rated is just a terrible, terrible position, like a terrible, terrible downgrade. That is still a world-class player. Here we go. It is going to be Kempembe to lift the FA Community Shield. So there it is, the newest man in Aston Villa's colors. It is Jose Maria Jimenez signing from Manchester United for 56.2 million pounds. Oh my God, it is a miracle. Dominic Revan has left the club. We've been trying to do this for three seasons, but he's finally gone. Who said miracles don't happen? He is headed to Gozdepe or whatever their name is for 820,000 pounds. Praise the FIFA gods. And Armand Bizet has finally left the club as well. We have sold the Frenchman to Brentford for 2.6 million pounds. There it is, lads. We have sold Frankie de Jong to Manchester United. A very controversial piece of business, but the price tag doesn't show it there. But 160 million pounds is so much money. Didn't love using him a lot last season. He had moments of brilliance, but for 160 million pounds, I am happy to sell him. We honestly have a God squad now, don't we? Having Jesus and Rashford up front with the ability to have Pintor and Silva off the bench is just a ridiculous striking option. We have signed Marcus Rashford from Barcelona for 100 million pounds. Here we go, the Champions League group stage draw. Who are we coming up against? Here we go. Aston Villa. Who are our group stage opponents? We are versing Real Madrid, Ghent, and Ajax in Group C. That is a tough, tough group. We need to get like group. That is potentially the group of death. Ajax have an incredible side. Ghent aren't too bad themselves. They have David if he's still there. Uh, Real Madrid, we know how ridiculous they are. We are really going to be in for a tough run this season. So there it is. On transfer deadline day, we have sold Benjamin Mendy to Bayern Munich. 38.4 million pounds is the transfer sum. Let's go and find ourselves a new starting left back. So there it is. Our new starting left back has been signed. His first signing in Villa Colors, Lucas Hernandez, 89 rated. We got him for his release clause of 58.5 million pounds from Atletico Madrid. Very excited to have this guy in the squad. So here we are. The transfer window done and dusted. What an insane window it was. Donnarumma, Neves, Jimenez, Rashford, and Hernandez all into the club. Pickford, Revan, Bizet, De Jong, and Mendy all out of the club. But Florian Janssens has left the club. He is off to Boca Juniors. 9.2 million pounds. One of our youth academy kids. Thanks for your service. Goosens has gone to Norwich. Okay, so we've been trying to sell him for a while. He finally accepts an offer. Good luck, Goosens. So there is the official confirmation. We have signed Takafusa Kubo, the Japanese wonder kid. I believe he's the one that has signed for Real Madrid in real life. But we're going to sign him and use him on the right-hand side of the field. He's very versatile. Definitely a utility player for us. Welcome to Aston Villa, mate. And that is going to be the end of our January transfer window. Kubo in, Janssens and Goosens out of the club. Our squad looking very good to attack the end of this season. We're going to try winning every piece of silverware. Away goals are the priority, are a necessity for the Champions League round of 16 here. Look at that TIFO the Roma fans have brought out. But it is the knockout rounds in the Champions League. The away leg up first here, taking on AS Roma. Rosano though, going to Ferrari, who goes to Hernandez. Hernandez back to Ferrari! It is Francesco Ferrari in his home nation of Italy, giving us an away goal here. Here we go, Brandt. Through to Jesus. Jesus holding it up nicely here. Going through. Squeeze it! Own goal! <laughs> Let's go! There 
there it is, fellas. That is full time. We probably could have won by more, but a 2-0 victory is definitely still a very strong advantage to have. This is the Carabao Cup. 3-1 over Tottenham. Let go, Aston Villa. Maybe a little bit of a dumb decision here. Hopefully not, but I have decided to simulate the second leg here against Roma. We have two away goals. If we somehow bottle this, then we don't deserve to be into the next round. If we can score an early goal, we'll be in a fantastic position. And we do. Francesco Ferrari gets us a goal. They get an away goal, though. So it is now 3-1 in the second half. Here we go. What's going to happen? Hopefully it stays like this. Hopefully no injuries or yellow cards for us. And we can get ourselves through to the quarterfinals. 15 minutes to go. It's looking pretty good at the moment. Yedvaj with a red card. And we go through to the Champions League quarters. Taking down Roma. 3-1 on aggregate. In hindsight, a good decision to simulate. But here we go, fellas. The Champions League quarterfinals. This is where we were eliminated last season against the same team, PSG. We're looking to make things right. Oh, it's a nice ball through. We can't let them square it though. Oh, Juan Basaka's overshot the mark in the fucking near post. Oh, Mbappe is too good. He destroyed us last season. And right now he has given PSG the away goal and the lead here. Oh, Juan Basaka in the shit position. Win that Hernandez. Oh, Hernandez. Are you fucking kidding me? Lucas Hernandez, what are you doing? Oh, no. Get back, you useless fucking idiots. They're going to score here. How? But that's full time. And, well, we are up shit creek without a paddle right now. I'm not even going to ask you guys to like or subscribe like normal. I am so focused on this game. Let's do it. Away at the Parc de Prunes. Good stuff from Neves. Jesus, an early goal would be brilliant. Rashford, Jesus, Rashford, 1-0! Let's fucking go! Two minutes in, we've got a goal back. Oh, you could not think of a better start. Oh, they turn it over. Oh, get there, get there. Rashford lunges onto it. Jesus, that's a second goal! Shit, Mbappe in the box here. They're going across! Damn it! Going there, nice ball there to Neymar. I see Rashford, we're going to play it short. Rashford, going. Lozano, there it is! There's another goal back. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Rashford. Marcus, Marcus, Rashford, let's fucking go! Let's go! Let's go! Woo! We've done it! Oh my god! We've done it in less than half the game! Oh, thank God, it's a terrible pass. Mavrati wins it back. <gasps> no, it's a penalty. No. Which way are you going, Mbappe? Which way are you going? You're going to the left. You're going left. You're going to the left. You're going to the fucking left. Let's go. Actually, just flick it. Neymar. Neymar. I see you back post. Jesus. Gabby nods it. There it is. Gabby Jesus. My God. We've done it. Oh, my God. Good, we've done it. Here we go, lads. The Champions League semi-final draw. Which Spanish side are we coming up against? We're going to get our passports and head to either Madrid or Barcelona. We're taking on Atletico Madrid. It's an El Clasico in the other game, but it is Atletico Madrid in the Champions League semi-finals. We're into stoppage time here. Can we get a massive advantage heading into the second leg through... Rashford, a 1-0 off the post in the 91st minute. There it is, fellas. The referee blows the full-time whistle. It's an advantage to us. Here we go, fellas. The second leg away at the Estadio Metropolitano. We've got a 1-0 aggregate lead. Can we close it out and get ourselves through to the Champions League final? We're about to find out. Martins going down the line here. Neymar's chasing in pursuit. And Richarlison has equalized the tie. Still on though, because Ferrari is going to pass it to Brent. Julian Brent! Oh my god! What a goal! We have an away goal here! Lozano. Rashford. Rashford! 
Let's go! We are three, one up on aggregate. Uh-oh, that's a good ball through to Lamar. Juan Basaka, they send that one back post! And they've got a goal back here. That's going to make the next 35 minutes very, very interesting. I see you, Marcus Rashford. I also see you, Jesus. Jesus! There it is! Gabby Jesus is surely going to fire us into the Champions League final. That is the full-time whistle. Aston Villa, Champions League final bound to face either Barcelona or Real Madrid. We have built a generational side. Three Premier League titles in a row. It's been insane. What a season it's been domestically. I would say in the Premier League, it's been our strongest season. We have looked our strongest, like... In terms of the amount of poor runs of form, in terms of like how dominant our wins have been, we have won so many games in massive scorelines. But Francesco Ferrari lifts the Premier League title, our third successive Premier League title. Our opponent for the Champions League final, Barcelona. The great side, the great Barcelona. We're going to have to take them down if we want to be champions of Europe. I am so excited for it. Before we get into the final, however, we are going to review the rest of this season. Liverpool winning the Europa League 2-1 over Schalke. Of course, we did win the Premier League here. 10 points clear of Manchester City on 81 points. A fantastic season. The three relegated sides, Everton! Got relegated. They have kept. They had a really good. They were really good throughout the entire series. Everton. They've been relegated here. Oh my! Of course, we did win the Community Shield over Manchester City at the start of the season. Arsenal went on to win the FA Cup. We were eliminated in the quarterfinals, and of course, we did win the Carabao Cup 3-1 over Tottenham. But here is a look through the squad report this season. We have built an incredible side here at Aston Villa. If this is the end, then I would be I would be so proud of this series as a whole. We've got our suit and tie on today. We're here to make it official. I love this side. I have loved this series, but I am ready to put it to bed. I am ready to finally win the Champions League title here with Aston Villa. An insane season. Rashford and Jesus absolutely killing it. Oh my God, lads. Champions League final bound, Aston Villa versus Barcelona. This is what the entire series has been leading up to, the Champions League final. Oh my God, lads. Barcelona versus Aston Villa. Let's bloody get into it. Right now, the jitters are so strong. My hands are literally sweating. I can't tell whether it's because I'm extremely nervous or if it's because I'm wearing a bloody suit with a studio light on in a hot room, but it doesn't matter because it is the Champions League final. We've had an incredible season. This would be the dream way to wrap it up. We've had games where we've been dominated. We've had games, plenty more games where we've done the dominating. And I'm hoping that it is another game of domination from our half, from our end. We just need to come out strong here. We need to take down Barcelona. We need to play the way that we have been all season long. Here is the Barcelona starting lineup to Stegen in there, St. Maximin. They got Wesley. You guys wanted me to bring in Wesley so bad this series. Hopefully he doesn't do a job against us. I saw Griezmann on the bench as well. Maya and Titi Teas. This is a damn impressive lineup. But here we go. Here is our Aston Villa side. The full strength starting 11 in there. Francesco Ferrari with the captain's armband. Our youth academy prospect. This is an insane side. If our key players fire like they have all season, we will be in a good position. But here we go. The Champions League final against Barcelona. Let's come and get it done. Ah, oh, they've played it through early. Juan Basaka in no man's land. Wesley... Oh, they've won the ball back. Not like this. Wesley, good defense from Kimpembe. They win the ball back, though. Wesley already causing us headaches. Sends it in. Put pressure on him. Don't give them a shot to spare. Uh, I just need to focus. Maya. Maya. Save from Donnarumma. Another corner here for Barcelona. They have dominated the opening to this game. St. Maximin sending that one near post. They hit the post. And Barcelona... Take the lead. This is shambolic. This has been a terrible start for us. They've come out of the gates firing. We look shell-shocked. We look like we lack experience. This is not 
the start we needed. A long way to go, but this is not positive. This is not a good start. Look at this. We can't give them that. How? Like, fuck me, man. Show some urgency. Here we go. Over the top. Rashford. Marcus. Ah, oh, straight to the keeper. I probably should have taken another touch there, but at least we got a breakthrough. We might have another one here as well. Oh, I wanted to go to fucking Jesus. Barcelona continue to attack. They send that one in. Brent, we've got to clear it stronger than that, man. We're playing like fucking dog shit. Dembele back heels it. Good save, Donnarumma. Barcelona, I haven't, play I haven't played a team like this all series long. They are making chances out of anything. Like, how? How, man? They are playing so well. Lozano on the counter here. Going to Jesus. Jesus to Ferrari. Ferrari, out there to Neymar. And drag this one back. Neymar, come on, mate. Neymar, passing that one to Julian Brandt. Brandt to Lozano. Come on, lads. Through. Ferrari! Hits it and it's saved, man. We made an opportunity, but not a, not a great angle. Good tackle there from Neymar. We're going to pass that one to Rashford. Marcus Rashford going to Jesus. Who goes to Brandt. Brandt to Jesus. Jesus through. Rashford equaliser. Marcus Rashford gets this game tied up here. 39th minute. It's one goal apiece. Oh my god. It's been good. I've kind of like calmed down the game a little bit. I'm just thinking about what I'm doing rather than getting overwhelmed. And it has helped us a lot. Barcelona were incredible in this opening start to the game. But we've started to get a little bit of a foothold in this game just focused on each pass at a time great finish though from Marcus Rashford plants his foot on the ball and then puts his laces through it 1-1 one, one. uh oh numerical advantage here for Barca and they've got the lead again 43rd minute where the fuck was our defense <sighs> kickoff goal as well I don't think I had possession since they scored no, actually, I did. But they have gone through here. Our defense in all sorts. Kimpembe dragging himself in again. You fucking suck, Kimpembe. Into first half stoppage time. Can we get that equalizer again? Rashford. Keepers off his line. Yes, the kickoff goal. Let's go. 2-2. Two, two. This is an insane game. The keeper to Stegen coming off his line helped us so much. We have basically scored from kickoff here. Beautiful ball, but a great finish from Marcus Rashford. Thank you to Stegen for coming off your line. You opened it up, opened those legs up, and we've equalized. Here we go. Jesus going to Rashford. <gasps> Brent! Oh, Brent skims the crossbar. No. What a start that would have been to the second half. Julian Brandt shot skims the crossbar. We're trying to defend. Good defense there. Come on. On the counter. What can we do? Jesus gets his body in front of it. <gasps> Jesus is in a great spot. Come on. Come on. Gabby. Jesus. To Neymar. We're in front. Neymar against his former side. Puts us in front in the Champions League final. I don't even give a crap about not do, like, doing the respect celebration because we are 3-2 up here. In the 52nd minute, definitely a long way to go. But that is brilliant. We get in front of the defender. Jesus, too fast for him, Titi. Great run in support there from Neymar. We sweaty goal it. We find the back of the net and we take the lead. Come on, Rashford. Yes. Lozano. Come on. Two goal advantage would be brilliant. Lozano. Lozano, just looking for some support. Goes here. Brandt. Hits it. Oh. Barcelona on the attack here, trying to find an equalizer. And oh, we've got to defend this. Get back, Wambasaki. You come out of the line so much, dude. Wambasaki, get back in a position. I just keep seeing him making these runs. Barcelona coming through, putting that one wide. We are going to make a substitution here. So are Barcelona. Continue on for them, but we are bringing off Julian Brandt. His work is done for the season. Ruben Neves on. We need a more defensive approach for the last 22 minutes. Come on. Ferrari, going there, Jesus to Ferrari, this is brilliant, Francesco Ferrari, the captain, oh, what a save to Stegen. We do have the corner here though, come on, a goal here would be massive, Kimpembe, 
It's gonna be all oh, Rashford. Good stuff, Rashford. I see you, Ferrari, but we're gonna be smart with it. We're gonna go. Look at Lozano. Chucky. Oh, what a save from De Stegen. I thought that was it. He green timed it. To Stegen though, making an incredible save to send it behind for a corner. And Griezmann's on, no. Come on, Lozano. We've been better in the second half. Come on, Jesus. There it is. Let's go. We are 4-2 up. There is still so much time in this game. Oh, Jesus has got us one hand on this premier, on this Champions League trophy. What a finish from the Brazilian. We were shaky in the first half. That's an understatement. But we have been cool, calm, and collected here in the second half. And now, if we play our cards right, we will be European champions. Eight more minutes. Eight more minutes. Barcelona on the attack here. Arthur. Oh, he stepped over it. Shoots it. It's blocked. It falls back to Hector Bayerin. That is a rocket. It's game on again, lads. Far out. I didn't want it to come to this. I got sold down the river. That was terrible by me. But my God, that is a strike and a half from Bayerin. We've held on for four minutes. We need to hold on for another four. Look at that. That is a beautiful goal from Bayerin. We're into the final minute here. We need to just hold on to possession and we will be champions of Europe. Play the smart pass. I'm not even looking for another goal. Blow that whistle, referee. There it is. Aston Villa, champions of Europe. We have completed the series, lads. I am not even lying when I say this is the most fun I have ever had making content in my five or six years doing YouTube. This series has been so damn enjoyable. And I truly, truly appreciate all of you that have watched this Aston Villa career mode series on the second channel. If you watched all 81 episodes, you are a hero to me. But we have done it. Champions of Europe with Villa. Come on, lads. Let's go. Oh, savor these title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. Just savor the title celebrations. I know I will. I'm out. Party no all by myself, call him and call it flow, open your mind, look at my moves, what do you see when you look at my shoes? They don't see all of the walking it took to blossom from being a pawn to a rook and beyond All black and I'm calm, king boy from here When you look at me now, everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. What do you see when you look at me now? Everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. One track nine, wanna roll with the squad, get fly. When you jump on an all black eye, when it's done, meditate all night. Surely got a one track nine, wanna go with just a couple more times, wanna smoke just a couple more times. Wanna